guys. Bye. Okay, I'll give all of us a minute to join. This is what we're painting today. This one, and then we'll start. And guys, by the way, you don't need a black canvas for it. We're going to start with a white canvas. So make sure you have a nice and white canvas. Technically, you could start with a black canvas if that's all you got, but I will be starting with a white canvas. So make sure you have a white canvas if you can. If not, no worries. And I'll give everyone a couple minutes to join and then we'll start. Hi. Hi, guys. Yeah, in the meantime, feel free to say hi in chat. Bless me. All right, guys. I think it's been a couple of minutes so we can start. My name is Viera. For those of you who don't know me, that's me. I'll be your instructor for today. And I'll show you how to paint a dragon eye. And guys, the cool thing about it, you can make it any color you want. I am using more like a teal slash emerald. So it's like cold green or a greeny blue color for the actual eye. But you guys are free to do any other color. It's gonna look good with orange, red, yellow, any color you can think of, you could totally do this. Or you can even do my base color and then add um, like a highlight of fiery color into it. So anything you can think of, you could totally do that. And guys, good news is this is fairly simple painting. So you can have a lot of fun with it. Once you know the structure, you're gonna be like, oh my goodness, I had no idea this is that simple. But we'll get there. So before we start, let's go through our supplies, make sure we have everything that we need. First of all, as always, you guys are going to be using canvas. So make sure you have some sort of canvas. I have this nice and big 16 by 20, it's exact same size as this painting. But um, the bigger the canvas, the harder it's going to be and the longer it's going to take you. So if you'd rather go with a little bit smaller, maybe half size of mine, that's still a decent size but it's gonna be a little easier for you and a little faster. Feel free to do that as well. But you can do bigger canvas too, no problem. Whatever you choose to. Next thing you're gonna need is a little bit of a painting water, so make sure you have some. Something to mix our paint on. I have quite a few of those plates laying around that I'll be mixing my paint on. Um, what else, what else, what else? Brushes, of course, very important. I'll be using three brushes. I don't know where my small brush went. I'll find it eventually. So I'm gonna be using three ones. I'm gonna be using this big square thing. I'm gonna be using the medium square thing. And I'm gonna be using the tiny pointy. Oh, here it is, found it. Here's my tiny pointy brush. So I'll be using tiny pointy brush too because there are a lot of details here and big and medium are very important. They don't have to be the same shape, but um, it's good to have a variety in sizes. What else? What else we're gonna need? Some sort of cloth or a paper towel. In my case, I have quite a few of this reusable fabric cloth that I'll be using. And what we'll do with this is we're gonna um, dab our brush on it. So once our water gets dirty and once uh, we wash our brush to get rid of the extra water, we're gonna use a cloth or a paper towel. Or if you made a mistake and you need to erase whatever you did right there, again, cloth or a paper towel. While your paint is still wet, you can just, just erase it like it never happened. And of course, we're going to need paint. So you guys can use either pre-mixed uh, pre colors today or you can use primary colors. As always, I'm going to be using primaries. I'll be using yellow, uh, white, blue, and black. I'm not going to be using red today. This painting doesn't require red, but again, if you want to do more like an orangey red eye, then grab the color that you want. 
If you guys want to stick with exact same colors that I'm doing, but you want to use premixed, you're going to need black, white, and you're going to need dark emerald or teal or any other color you choose to. You can choose blue, you can choose red, you can choose orange, whichever color you would like. That's totally fine. Just choose that. So just three colors. If you want to use premixed, if you're mixing, then you're going to need four primaries. And that's pretty much it. So guys, before we start again, one more little thing is, if this is your first time joining us, welcome. If this is your 20th time joining us, welcome. So glad you guys are here. For those of you who don't know, this video will stay up. So if you, let's say, you can't stay the full time or you just weren't aware this event is happening and now you saw it and you're feeling like you really wish you could join, it's gonna stay up on our Facebook page for about a month and then we're gonna move it to YouTube where it's gonna stay forever so you're not gonna miss it you're still gonna be able to do it sometime later as well all right now what are we gonna start with let's go through the breakdown for this wonderful painting there's technically a lot of different ways we could go about it let me tell you first how we're not gonna do it let's say you starting with a black canvas you will be doing um, pretty much similarly to what we are doing. The only thing you're not gonna be doing the black around it, and you might need a couple layers of light color in between. For those of us who are starting with white canvas, we're gonna start with putting circle right here. So it's not gonna be circle, it's gonna be like a slightly squished circle for the eye. And we're gonna start working on the colors here. So we're gonna do light to dark. We will add a couple of brushstrokes of light like this and then a couple of brush strokes of dark from the outside. So we will do two, two, just two color for now. We'll do two color here. Then we're gonna move on the outside. And the outside, we're just gonna color everything with black. So just whole thing, you're gonna color with black. And now we're gonna be letting it dry. After it's dry, we're gonna, well, actually while it's drying, we're gonna go back onto our eye and we'll flick a little bit of black from the sides and we will let this part so we'll finish, mostly finish our eye before we actually move on to black background. And once our black background is somewhat dry, it doesn't have to be perfectly dry for this painting, uh, we're gonna start adding grays. Do you see all those areas? We're just gonna do large brush strokes in grays, and there are gonna be a couple different shades of gray, and we will flick a little bit of the color, any color that is present here to make it look like it's reflecting on the surrounding areas and after that we're going to move on to uh, white we'll add a little bit of white and after we're going to take black again and we're going to separate you see all those lines yeah we're not going to work around them those are just going to be large brush strokes and after we have done with those brush strokes we're going to add all those separator lines that will break those large brush strokes onto the scale and once we have that we'll finish with final really really bright white highlight that will indicate the light reflection so as i mentioned this guys it's going to be fun and it's not one of those crazy hard paintings that you have to follow precisely otherwise it's not going to turn out this is going to turn out either way i promise you and again you can totally change your colors all right so grab your canvas we're going to start by putting a squish circle in the middle for our eye and you can sketch it with any color you want. I'm going to just sketch with grays to make it very simple. So I'm going to grab a little bit of white, a little bit of black, mix them up, make some gray. And with that gray, I'm going to sketch it. If you have a pencil nearby, you can totally sketch with pencil, no problem. Or if you have whatever color you decided to use for the actual eye, you could do your sketch with that exact color. In my case, I don't have it mixed yet. So I'm going to do it with gray. It really doesn't matter which color you sketch with. You can grab a random color and sketch, sketch with a super random color as well. Um, doesn't matter. All right, so we're gonna decide where that middle of the eye is gonna be. For me, it's gonna be right in the middle. And you see, it's not necessarily a perfect circle. It's more like I squished my circle from the sides a little bit. 
It's like I was making a bread, you know, the homemade bread that you need, and then you make a dough in a bowl. It's that bowl. It's never perfect, but it's so, sort of circular. That's what you want it to look like. Right, and once you guys have this imperfect circle, let me know, and then we'll move on to the next things. No, we're not wetting the canvas right now. For this painting, we're not gonna be wetting the canvas. If you already did wet your canvas, it's not a problem at all, it's not a mistake, but it's not necessary either, so that's why we're not gonna do it. Do we have a circle? Sort of circle, almost circle. Guys, I'm just checking the messages here. Awesome. Yeah, okay, I see some thumbs up, that's great. Now we're gonna move on to this color. So I'm gonna mix my uh, greeny blue color. What I'm gonna need for it is I'm gonna need some yellow and I'm gonna need some blue. So I'm gonna put some yellow and some blue on my plate and I already have black and white on my palette because I was mixing my gray. So make sure you have black, white, blue, and yellow if you are mixing that color. If you're doing your own color, you can choose whichever color you would like. So now I have those three colors and I'm going to start mixing my dark too. So I'm going to make a very, very dark version of it first. I'm going to start with um, a little bit of white. I'm going to scoop some white. I'm going to scoop some blue. Mix them up. And now little by little, I'm going to start adding yellow. Just touch by touch. You don't want to add too much because it's going to turn it into very green shade of blue and that's not the color that I want. I want it more like a teal or emerald which means it needs to have a little less um, of yellow and a little more of blue. So it's good to start adding yellow little by little until you get the right color and then you stop. So I think in my case this should be a good color. Oh yeah that's very teal-ish color. I'm just trying a little smidge to see if I like the color, if I want to adjust it. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to stick with this color. So this is the color that's going to be darkest color for me. But we're actually going to start using the light color. So as soon as you mix your dark color, actually, let me put a big brush stroke here. We're going to color this with black anyway, so it doesn't matter. Just so you can see the color that I mixed for my dark version. That's my dark color. Actually guys, give me a second. I'm gonna turn off my top light because it's messing with the color. All right, done. Now you should be able to see the color a little better. Okay, so now we're going to grab a little bit of this color that we mixed and we're going to mix it with some white. So scoop it on the side, grab some white, mix it with actually lots of white. We need to get a very, very light shade. You see the difference? But I only grabbed a little bit of the color that I mixed because I still need lots of this dark color. So you don't want to mix all of it. Just grab a little and mix it on the side. And here is my light version. And that's what I'm going to start using. So starting from right middle here, I'm going to start flicking it. Where's the sides? Do 
you see I have lots and lots inside so majority of the eye is filled with this light color and guys as soon as we have it we're gonna need to move to next color we cannot wait it has to be done really really fast so as soon as we have it I'm gonna wash off my medium brush right away oh and by the way yes I did that all with a medium brush but you can use any other brush whichever feels comfortable and then I'm gonna grab this darker version the first one that we mixed and I'm gonna flick it from this outside in and you will see it will start blending because of how wet your inner section is and that's the goal that's why we have to do it right away and we cannot wait because we do want it to blend And now that we have both colors, I'm going to wash off my brush. I'll dry it on a cloth. And if there is no perfect blending somewhere in between, I kind of actually like when it's a little bit harsher. Do you see when it's not perfect blended, but there is harsh lines? I personally like it. If you don't like it, grab that clean, wet brush, slightly wet brush, and go right over it and smudge it. And you will see that your blending will be much smoother. But again, guys, that's a personal preference whether you want harsh lines and more of a texture and design in the eye, or if you want more of a smooth blending, that's totally up to you. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you a second to do all this because mine is pretty much done. I'm quickly gonna fix my shape a little. But other than that, I'm good to go here. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some time to do this, and in the meantime, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Sandra, um, we're gonna make this darker actually later on the sides. If you have teal pre-mixed, there is no really way to make it darker. I would definitely tell you not to add black to it because it's gonna dim it up. So I would say use the darkest version that you have. Alternatively, if you have darker blue and yellow, what you could do, you could darken your teal by adding a bit more blue and a bit more yellow into it, but only if you have dark blue available. Do not add black right now to this color under any circumstance, because if you add black to any color, whichever color you guys are using, it's gonna dim it and it's gonna be very not bright color. You don't want that. You want this to be vibrant and have a great contrast with your black background. Okay, awesome. All right, guys, I'm going to give you all a second to do this. When you have it, let me know in chat. Say good to go or done or, or hearts, whatever you, want to, whatever you want to say, just to let me know that you're ready, and then I'll show you what's next. Aquamarine, yes, totally fine. Whatever, guys, you like. That's a personal preference. You don't have to have exact same color as me here. This painting will look fantastic with any color. When I was making, my second choice, for example, was uh, orange. I couldn't decide whether I want to have this one, like a tealy blue color, or if I want to have orange, because I think orange will look so good as well. So feel free. Any color. If you, yours is not that dark, that's fine. 
because we're actually going to darken it up later with black, straight black. It's not going to be mixed black. So you will see. And I am using acrylic paint. I'm using student grade acrylic. Yes, purple. I am so excited to see it. Please tell, show us photo once you're done. I would love to see how this looks in purple. All right, I see some good to go. That's good. Awesome. All right, guys, good job. Now we're going to let it stay for a little bit. We don't need to attend to it right now. We're going to need to go on to our background right now. So what you're going to do, you're going to wash up your medium brush. Unless you already did, then you're good. Then you're going to grab your large brush, the biggest brush that you have, dip it in the water, and um, you're going to color the whole background black. You're getting lots of black paint. Guys, I see your questions. I will um, answer them as soon as I'm done my black, I promise. Oops. That is not good, but... It is fine. It is fixable. There's nothing we cannot fix here. So I usually go right around the eye first. And then the rest of the background, but whatever feels easier. Let's quickly fix that middle. And another thing I'm going to do right away is I'm going to paint my edges. So as I go, I'll paint the top and the sides of my canvas as well. If you guys don't want to do it now, that's no problem. You don't have to. Technically, you could do your edges very last. That would be totally fine. But I like doing it right away. Almost done. So I need that side and I'm done. Okay. 
Okay, my edges, my top, my background, everything is colored. Now I'm gonna let it all dry. So guys, as soon as you have it, brushes down, and yes, wash off whichever brush you use right away because you don't want paint to dry on it. And let it dry properly. It needs to be uh, fairly dry for us to continue working on it. And in the meantime, I am going to read the comments and see if anyone has any questions that I can answer for you guys. Um, a reason for student grade, yes, A price, B thickness. You'll find that professional acrylic is very thick or it can be very thick. Um, yeah, and the thicker it is, the harder it is actually to make this kind of paintings with it. Thick acrylic is good for certain things. Like for example, if you're using palette knife or you're making abstract, thick acrylic is great. But when we're mixing a lot of colors and we involving a lot of detail, I personally don't like thick acrylic. And I find that it's really hard for uh, beginners to use generally thick acrylic. The thinner it is, the easier it is to mix and to use it. So that's why we use ourselves and recommend that people use student grade acrylic. And price is a big factor of it too, because I have a lot of acrylic paint at home, of probably all brands imaginable. And there are certain professional acrylics that um, this big of a tube is going to cost the same price as this thing and only because the pigment is strong but you don't use it for this size paintings what do you use those paints for is when you make really detailed so let's say we were painting a face with all the shades shadows and whatever else and like wrinkles then yes we, it would be worth using different acrylic to get um everything perfect all the small details perfect but when we do paintings like this it just doesn't make sense to use that expensive of acrylic when we can get the same result with a cheaper acrylic and actually have easier time doing it. So I hope that helps. I hope that answers the question. So if you're painting on a black canvas, clearly you don't need to cover the background black. You just start with the middle and you do the exact same steps that we did in the middle. You put the circle first and then you start doing the darker shade around the circle. Uh, from the outside in and the lighter shade from the inside out. The only difference is why we're starting with a white canvas and why um, I wouldn't recommend starting with a black canvas, but you can, is um, because we're starting with a white canvas, this color is going to come really, really bright right away because it's laid over the white background. So it has a white backdrop, which makes it more vibrant. If you're working over black canvas, you just might need to do a couple layers here of both colors because you're laid over dark background. So the color naturally is gonna be a little bit dimmer. So I'm gonna come out right away as nice and vibrant, which is fixable. It's not a big deal. It's totally fine. You're just gonna to need to let it dry and add second layer. And then it's gonna be really nice and vibrant. Rachel, you could totally use gesso. If you have black gesso, you could totally use black gesso for the background right now instead of black paint but I would probably recommend using black paint for the details as we go further versus gesso. And I do not prime surfaces. So for this painting, so we do not prime surfaces. If you're using, let's say wood, yes, prime it 100%, gesso it, send it, and then we'll paint on it. If you're using canvas, you don't have to prime it. Oh, you guys are so nice. Please, to answer your uh, question about blues, 
they do have ultramarine and fatal fatalo fatalo please forgive me if i'm pronouncing it correct i am 100 percent sure i'm not saying right and i don't know how to say it right but you know which one i mean um i use that one so i actually purposely i really don't like ultramarine blue so i never buy it and the reason why is a lot of the colors that i mix with my blue are teals ultramarine blue will never give you a good teal it's always going to be not bright color it's always going to be this dustier grayer almost even um yeah it really looks great that's all it looks like when you try to mix it into teal so that's why i never use ultramarine blue ultramarine blue will give you beautiful purple if you mix it with red or pink but it will give you horrible teal so i only use either primary or fatalo fatalo that one I personally really like them and they make nice purple as well. The Curry's brand, the one that we buy, the Fatalo from the brand that we buy makes really nice purple. So it's just versatile color. So how is everyone? Do we have a black background or not yet? Almost? I know, guys, if, you, if you're using large canvas, that's a lot of um, black area to paint. So I'm going to give you as much time as you guys need. No rush. But once you have it, just let me know in chat. Good to go. Or ready or excited to move forward. And I'll show you what's next. And next, we're going to move on to our eye. Mm -hmm. It is wet. It's fine. You, you don't have to wait until it dries. No problem. Yeah, it's fine if it's wet because we're going to move on to our eye for a little bit and we're going to do our eye and only once we do our eye, then we're going to move to our black. So while we do our eye, our black have a bit more time to dry up as well. Yes, hair dryer is a lifesaver. I agree. So guys, it looks like a lot of us have a background ready. It's just not dry, but that's fine. So what are we going to do? We're going to move on to our eye now and you're going to grab your medium brush. You're going to wash it off really, really, really well. Make sure it doesn't have any black or any color left. Make sure it's like super, super clean. So I usually wash it and then I dry it on a cloth or a paper towel. And then you're going to grab just a tiny touch of white. So we're going to dry brush our white over. So you're going to grab just a touch. You see there's not a lot. And we're almost going to dry brush it. Let me show you how. So from the middle here, we're going to start flicking our white. You need it really, really transparent. So you don't want it um, blobby and bright. We will add a broad, blobby and bright white later. So this one you need very light, very transparent, and you're gonna streak it from this middle. So imagine that there is a line going right here. So from that line, you're gonna be streaking that very light white. Sorry, very light as in coverage, not as in color. Clearly white is pretty light in color. Let me show you a little bit of a troubleshooting here. You see how light and transparent it is? Just in case you didn't do it right, you grabbed too much paint on your brush and you added a blob. So how do you fix that? If you added a blob, wash off your brush. You dry it on a cloth so it doesn't have that extra water. And then you blend it with a clean, slightly wet brush. That is how you get rid of a blob mistake. And generally, if you don't have a light touch and you find that all your brush strokes are a bit blobbier, that's totally fine as long as you blend them. As long as you wash your brush and with a clean, slightly wet brush, you go over it and blend it, that's no problem at all. 
And again, I personally like having a little streaks. I don't like uh, perfect blending. I like having a little bit of texture and a little bit of um, the streaks visible, visible so you can see the design in the eye. But if that's not your thing, you can do more of a perfect blending. Totally up to you guys. And also, if anyone wanted to experiment, and let's say you wanted to incorporate another color and you wanted to do maybe like a gold coming out from inside the eye right here, now is your time. This is the best time for you. Make, let's say, light orange or uh, yellow mixed with white or a little bit of both and just streak it from the middle and it will look really, really good. Right, I, I have lots, and as you guys can see, this looks amazing. Like from the distance, it looks like it's glowing. That's the goal. And after we add black from the sides, it's gonna look like it's going into the deep, like it's coming from the darkness of a cave or something, and it's just the glowing eye. It's gonna look really cool. We're halfway through the eye. What's important in this eye is actually pretty much that is that it gets from the slight middle, gradually darker, 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 and creates the shape um, and creates this lightness that makes it look like it's glowing. So that's why we started with two tones, darker from the outside and lighter from the inside. And now we add an extra light tone and then we're gonna add extra dark. So we're gonna end up with four tone and half tones in between because we're blending. Yeah, I will give you guys a couple more minutes because it doesn't look like anyone is ready. But if you are ready, let me know in chat and then I will show you the black section on the eye. Yes, you could totally use a hair dryer and you don't have to put it on a cool setting. I dried my canvas whenever I needed to on a hot setting, it was totally fine. You maybe don't bring it super close to your canvas, but it should be fine. Yes, I see some ready. Uh, Rachel, if your canvas tends to show through the paint, you just need another layer of paint or you're gonna need to start using more paint on your brush. I find when you guys don't use enough paint on your brush, or you don't dip your brush in the water ever, then it's really hard to cover area, such large areas of a canvas as our background, for example. So what I usually do is I dip my brush in the water every time when I run out of paint before I refill my brush with paint, I dip it in the water first, then into paint, and then onto canvas. That way my brush stays wet enough for me to spread the paint without seeing the white canvas coming through. Or sometimes you just need a little bit more paint, that's all it is. Or if you already did a layer and you realize now that you have lots of white spots coming through, just put another layer. Ready, ready, ready. Yes, I see lots of ready. This white? Okay, I see a comment that's saying that I have a little bit of white showing. That's totally fine. No, there is no white coming through on my eye. That's just white and um, the paint. That's that's not a canvas. This one is fine. Okay, guys, so let me show you what we're going to do with black. And are we going to do the exact same thing? Do you remember how we did this coming out with white from the middle out? We're going to do the same with the black, but from the outside in. Okay, let me show you. So you're going to grab just a little bit of black on your brush. And the black is a harder color to work with than white. So really make sure you don't take a blob of it. And unfortunately, we're not going to be able to blend it as well as we did with white. With white, if you made a mistake and put a large brush stroke, because there's nothing going on else there, we could just wash our brush and blend it. With the black, that's not going to work. 
So be careful this time. So I took my black and I actually dried up. So after I put it on my brush, I dried up my brush on a cloth with paint on it to get rid of all the extra paint. So let me show you. Now I'm gonna start flicking my brush. Now brush strokes from the sides, those are the sides. So our eye is in this direction, right? So from the sides, brush strokes are gonna be a little bit longer. The brush strokes that are from the top and the bottom are gonna be a little shorter. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna start streaking. Do you see how light it is? Super, super light. And it kind of gets rid of that edge. Do you see that sharp, bright circle edge that we see now? We wanna completely get rid of it. But take your time. Streak it with a very little bit of paint. If you need to do it a couple times and go around it a couple times because of how light is the coverage from the first time, go for it. Don't, take your time, don't rush through it. If you accidentally put blobs, you're not gonna be able to blend them. So I'm gonna start here and then I'm gonna continue going further. And make sure some, some of them are a little longer, some of them are a little shorter. You don't want all of them to be the same size because it's just going to look like another line. It's not going to look like blending. see and I'm gonna continue doing the exact same thing and going further around and remember I told you when we go to the sides right here and right here some of them are gonna be longer do you see I'm streaking some of the brush strokes not all of them notice not the whole thing is going longer here I'm adding some brush strokes that are small you see the shorties and some of them that are a little longer here and the top is only shorties so I'm gonna go first round of all around and then if I need to do second round I will do second round I know it's a really cool technique once you get a hold of it and you like figure out how to do it you can use it to so to do so many different things but for eyes this is the best whether it's a cat eye crocodile eye dragon eye this is the best technique to use Oh, and also I want to tell you one more thing. Just pay attention, guys. When I streak my brush strokes, I don't start right from the line. So I don't start from here and bring it up. What I start, I start a little bit further into my black background. I start about half inch or quarter inch further into my background and streak from there. And I personally find that it just goes better and it covers that line better versus starting right on the line.
Awesome. I am, I, I'm thinking one round was enough for my eye. I might go over just a little bit again and go this time right over the edge again, wherever um, the edge is not perfectly blended, I'll go over it. But the streaking, this is perfect. I'm not adding any more streaking in because this is more than enough. Okay, my eye is done, the middle of the eye. Well, there's gonna be this tiny little black thing going in the middle, but other than that, it is done. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple more minutes to finish this, and do you see how well it's blended and it looks like it's coming out from the darkness and it's glowing? So I'm gonna give you a little bit more time to do this, and whenever you're ready, again, just let me know in chat, say good to go, so I'll show you next steps. Um, I am using my brush, so to answer your question about the size of the brush, I am using my brush in whichever way I can. So I'm not just using my brush flat, I'm using it edge, I'm using the top edge, I'm using the corner, whatever gives me, because your brushes are versatile. You guys can use your brushes in so many different ways, like just this brush can give you so many different brush strokes. So this is, if you use it flat, right, it gives you thick brush strokes, if you use it on the side, gives you thinner brush strokes. If you use it on a top edge, it gives you the thinnest brush strokes. You can use it dabbing like this. You can use a corner. You can use the edge. Do you see how many different textures and styles this brush is capable of? If you just turn it around a little. So absolutely, whichever brush you use, turn it, twist it, see how it works best for you. You are very, very welcome, guys. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Done, done. I see a couple thumbs ups. That's great. I'll give you a couple more minutes just because I know how many of you are watching. I see how many of you said done. So I'll wait for a couple more people to be done and then we'll move. And in the meantime, guys, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm all ears. All ears, guys, all ears. Okay, guys, let's add, I see a couple more done, so we'll add this, the inner part of the eye, so this black section. Now, something to think about here, it should be thinner here, thicker here, thinner here. So it should be thinner, thicker, thicker, thicker. Uh, it's pretty straight for a little bit here, but it's still thicker than on the ends, and then the ends, it should get gradually thinner again. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller. Totally up to you. Mine is pretty big. So I'm gonna do it pretty much the same. 
And I would be using my medium brush, but if you find that maybe sketching it with a small brush and then filling it with a medium brush is easier for you, that's totally fine as well. I'm gonna start by just putting one line to know where the middle of that is, so I don't mess it up. So I'm gonna put one line in the middle. I put one line in the middle just for me to know that this is the middle. I need to make it bigger. I'm almost happy with it. Not fully happy with it, almost happy with it. I'll fix one thing here once we move on to our white and then I'm gonna be happy with it. So guys, once you have it, let me know. But in my case, again, as I mentioned before, I am done. The only thing I think I went a little bit too far with the black here on the sides. So I'm gonna make it skinnier here, but I will do that with white. So once we add the final white, I will just add it here and I'll cover up those little bumps there. But again, the shape is a preference. It could be even wider. You can make it much wider here and it will still look really, really good. My just personal preference is I wanted it a little bit smaller, so I'm going to do that later. No problem here. It doesn't go all the way across. No, you could bring it a little lower if you wanted, but I wouldn't put it all the way across. I would put it, yeah, you could just leave a little bit coming through. My concern and the reason why I'm saying I'm not going to put it all the way across is my concern because everything else is also black that if you put it all the way across it's going to look like your eye is actually broken into two pieces so it's not going to have that effect of just like this thing going all the way across but it's still being a solid eye but unfortunately it might turn into looking like a broken eye that's just falling apart just because of the black background how much black we have so that's why i'm saying don't maybe put it all the way maybe leave at least a little bit on the bottom but again, up to you, personal choice. If you want it all the way across, no problem. Now guys, after this, we're gonna move on to our gray. So let me show you this painting again. Do you see how all those lines here? So all those lines we're gonna put in gray first. So there's one line right here, and there's second line right here, and then third big line right here. On the bottom there are two. This connects to this. This connects to this. This big one doesn't connect to anything. And there's a tiny little corner right here, and there's a tiny little smidge here. But we don't have to do that in gray. That we're gonna do in we will do in a color later on for right now we're only worrying about gray so what are you gonna do you're gonna make medium gray so something that's not crazy light because you don't want it to look crazy light on your black background it just needs to be a little bit lighter than the background not super super light so you're gonna grab your medium brush again some black some white mix them up make medium ish gray 
And I'm gonna try my gray a little bit too to see if that's the right color. I don't wanna to commit to it unless I know whether I'm gonna like it or, yeah, oh, that's perfect color. So we're gonna make medium gray. That is my medium gray. No, it looks pretty light right now, but once it dries, I know my paint, it's gonna look darker once it dries. Plus, this is still a good contrast. And let me show you on my palette. This is the gray I used to see on my palette looks kind of dark, but as soon as I put it on a, a black background, it looks really, really bright because there's enough of contrast for you to see it. Was people supposed to be in the middle? Ideally, yes, not ideally, it's fine. And you know why? Let's say you're looking somewhere else. It might look visually, if your dragon is looking somewhere else, elsewhere, that it's not in the middle, so it's fine. It's just your dragon is looking different direction. So I'm gonna start with my first line. I'm gonna put it right here. It's gonna be pretty thick. And you see there is black in between. I'm not adding it right on top of the eye roll. There is, should be a buffer black in between for sure. So that's our first one. And you want it a little thinner here. But again, we can edit those lines with the black later on. All those lines are not final because of the black background. If we don't like them, we just add more black. So we can change the form, we can change the size, everything. We can change everything, literally. You just have to put them in. So that's our first line. As soon as we have our first line on top, we can start adding first line on the bottom right away. And you see, I'm not having a harsh ending to this line. I'm trying to kind of fade it into the black. So if you can do that, if not, no worries. We can fix all that with the black later on again. So those are first lines, one on top, one on the bottom. After that, we'll move on to our second line. So we'll put second on top, second on the bottom. Second on top is not going to be as thick as the first on top. It's going to be a little smaller. Second on the bottom is going to be actually thicker. So again, leave a little bit of gap in between your lines. So do you see it's thinner here than this line? That's what you want. And now I'm gonna move on to the bottom. And the bottom, this is gonna be thin here, but it's gonna get thicker right there. So now we have two lines. And we only have one 
big line left on top and just a couple of brush strokes on the bottom. And that is it for this shade of gray. So I'm gonna go on to the top now. And I will add one more line. Again, leave some space in between. It's very important. You see, this one is the thickest one. And on this side, I'll bring it all the way. I'll just try to fade it into black on top. So we have all our line. The only thing I'll add is I'll add a couple brush strokes of gray on the very bottom here. So just following the shape of the lines, just a couple of brush strokes. They don't need to come into a separate line. And you don't have to even do this. This is not a super necessary step. If you'd rather just have black, absolutely, that's totally fine. Done, done, and done. Okay, I'll give you guys a couple minutes. Once you have it, as always, let me know in chat, and then I will show you the next uh, layering over those lines, because there are gonna be quite a few layers over those lines here. Done, yes, exciting. Anyone else? Okay, I'll we'll wait a couple more minutes because I only got one done. Wait a few more minutes. Let's see what cool stuff I can show you what I have around while we wait, if anything. Guys, for those of you who love pumpkin spice as much as I do, this is coming for free on Facebook in October as well. Just saying. And if you have a good black canvas, you can use it for this one because this one is going to need to have pre-painted black canvas before event. And it's like a sign that you can use as decoration for your house or yard. Either one is fine. And then you don't have to feel guilty when you start adding pumpkin spice to everything you cook. Done, done, done. That's awesome. Okay, guys, so 
For next colors, what we can do is we can make a slightly touch lighter gray. You're not gonna have much of it, and guys, it's not like a separate um, step. This is almost the same step, which is gonna add a little highlight and slightly lighter gray. So just whatever gray you just use, and maybe add a tiny smidge more white into it, make it a little lighter. It doesn't have to be crazy light, just a little lighter. For me, okay, this is my first gray. This is my second gray. It's, it's lighter, but because I'm using just a touch of it, you're not gonna see the difference much. And with this slightly lighter gray and just a little bit of it, we're gonna go over our um, lines and we're gonna add a highlight. So we're gonna start with this one. On this one, it's very important that you do a line on top to separate this one into two lines. So do you see that first one? We need to separate it onto light and dark area. So here, we're gonna add the light area. And then for the rest, you don't really care. You just add a smidge of it wherever you want. But you don't have to be precise. On this one, this is the only one where you have to be precise of how you add it and where you add it and how much of it you added. On the rest, just a little bit. Do you see, you can hardly see it here. Adriana, if your lines are too harsh, that's no problem. You can just take black and sm smudge them, make them smoother with black. Because our background is black, you can fix all your lines with black. That's no problem. Amanda, if yours is too light, you could definitely go darker. That's no problem. Yeah, you can make, you can keep this first color that you did as your light color. And instead of adding lighter color next, you can do darker color, but you'll have to do reverse. So if I added the lighter one here on top, you're going to do darker one on the bottom. And if we added, I added a lighter in the middle mostly, you're going to do darker one from the sides of your lines mostly. So you could do that. You could totally do reverse. This is not the white that I'm used. For those who are wondering, this is gray. So I just added a touch of white to the gray that I used originally to make it slightly lighter. And that's the color that I used. And guys, next color is going to be our, do you remember the dark color we used here? The first color that we mixed? If you still have at least a little bit of it, that's what you're going to use. If you don't, you're going to mix it again. So whatever color was this color from the outline that you flipped, that's the turn for that color. So you grab that color. I still have a little bit, so I don't need to mix it. Again, if you fully run out and you are doing the same color as I did, that's going to be blue, white, yellow. You start by mixing blue and white to make a good shade of blue. And then after that, you can start a yellow smidge by smidge until you get it to the right shade of greener blue-ish emerald color. And now with this color, we're going to add a little um, highlight. So we're going to make it look like this eye is reflecting on the rest of the things because you know dragons they usually are like leathery right and the scales have the shine to it so it will naturally reflect everything that's around it especially if there's such a thing uh such a big and bright thing as an eye so that's why we're gonna add this reflection technically you can add it anywhere you want for me i'm gonna add it here on the bottom part right a little bit here very lightly, very, very lightly. Do you see? On a side that's closer to the middle. And I'll let it right here too. And guys, 
remember if you select a goal a little bit too much with it and you go over black maybe places you don't want to go that's no problem because we will edit it with black later so we're going to go with black over it again and we'll fix whatever too muchness you add right now so don't worry about that that's yeah don't mind that right here So here, 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 and I'm gonna add some right here, but on the bottom parts as well, so on the lower part. All right, guys, and after that, we're going to add this lighter shade of the same color. Do you remember the one that we flicked from the middle? It doesn't have to be exactly the same color. Uh, as long as it's similar color, it's all good. I don't have any left, but I still have a little bit of this darker color. So I'm going to mix that with white, and it's going to give me the right color. Just a little bit of that, and you don't need much. And if you don't have any left, you can mix it from scratch as well. And it's the same thing white, blue, and yellow, just this time add way more white. And where I'm gonna add it. So here I let it on this part very lightly. So pretty much everywhere where you added the darker color, but less. And you see now this starts glowing too slowly and we're not done. It's going to get better than this. And as always, once you guys have it, let me know in chat and I'll show you next steps, but no rush. Okay, I see done and done. Awesome.
else is done. Anyone else? Almost? Yes. Awesome. I see a couple more done. So that's great. All right, guys. Now we're going to grab straight white. And again, you're only going to grab a little. Do you remember how we dry brushed it from the middle? We're going to do something very similar. So you're only going to grab a little bit of white on your brush. You don't want it blobby. And we will add a little bit of straight white, but again, just a touch over those lines. So here we're going to go right over this top part. So remember the one that we added that's lighter. And very lightly brush in some white. You see? And I'm using the top edge of my medium brush for this. I find that that works the best for you. I just, I like how versatile this brush is. So I usually use just one brush, pretty much. And then I just turn it and twist it to create different effects. So do you see now that looks like the light is coming from here, right? And this is in the shadow and that's what you want. And do you see, I mostly added it closer to the middle and then I faded it towards the sides. If you want to do the whole thing, that would not be a mistake. You could totally do the whole thing. No problem. On the top, I'll let a little highlight again, mostly in the middle and then fade it towards the sides. And on the top, the same thing, mostly in the middle. Oh, that was a lot. And fade it towards the sides. Carol, no, I did not add extender or anything else. Okay, now I'm going to move to the bottom and I'll add a highlight right here. And mostly here and then I will fade it to the sides. The same on the bottom. And this one, if it's a little brighter, that's totally fine. That needs to be pretty bright. Yes, that looks beautiful. All right, guys. So after we have this, oh, we forgot two little things. So we're going to add two little things quickly. Do you remember I told you there's going to be a corner here and a flick right here? So with whichever teal or any color that you have left that's like from your eye, just add a little corner right here. A little darker too. And then a little flick right here. And after this, we're going to move back to our black and we're going to start shaping everything and then adding dividers and then final highlight and we're done. There's still a lot of work, but I would say we are about 70% through at this point, which is a good news. I'll give you guys a couple more minutes and in the meantime, I'm going to check the comments and see if anyone has any questions. Or it could be either, if it's not blending per perfectly, it could be either bad paint or bad brushes. It's hard to say because either one could be an issue.
All right. So guys, now we're going to move to black. Wash off your brushes and grab some black. Again, I'm not going to be grabbing a whole bunch of black on my brush, but just a little bit, but more than the white. Do you remember how we dry brush it? Now we're not going to dry brush it. So grab a good amount. Just don't grab too much either because you don't want blobs. And you're going to shape all the lines. So you're going to go around them. And if there are certain places where you lost your black completely, you're going to add it on. So let's say right here. So I lost my black. I'm going to go back and I'll add it because there needs to be a separation between those lines. So you don't have to go around all of your lines, only wherever you went too far with your gray or color and you lost the black, then you're going to add it. Or if you just made line too thick, you're going to make it thinner. So right here, I'm going to thin up this line a little. And this one. I'm also going to slightly fade them. So how do you fade lines? You, there, you only need a touch of black. And you lightly go over the areas that you want to fade with a dry brush black. So you dry brush black over areas to fade them. If you want to fade anything, it's totally up to you. So I faded it a little bit there, and here I'm going to add a bit more black, but solid, just because I kind of went a little too far here. I want to make it a bit bigger. So you just go around it and edit. Every line that you want to edit, edit it. Sherry, to answer your question, I am not repainting. I have not repainted this canvas with anything. And generally, when we start with white canvas, we don't prime it or prepaint it with anything. We just use it as is. It's a perfect white backdrop for our paint. Sometimes we would prepaint canvases with black, but that's not the case. This particular painting doesn't require prepainted canvas. And I will edit out this one a little bit, so I'm going to fade this line to make it thinner. So I'm going to start from here and lightly overlap my black as I go further towards the line. And do you see it fades it? It makes it smaller. That's the fading. With fading, it's very important that you have very light touch. So you very lightly scrape the surface of your canvas and you only have a touch of paint on your brush. Because otherwise, it's not going to fade. I'll add it out a little bit this time too. Okay, I am done my editing. I am very happy with uh, what kind of lines I have, how many, and positioning and size and everything else. So, done with editing. So now I'm going to move on to dividers. All my dividers I'm going to do with a small brush. So I'm going to wash off my medium brush and I'll put it aside. And I'm going to go to my small brush. And I will be using black as well. Now let me show you on this painting first what are we going to do. Do you see those lines? There are lots of lines here. Here they're everywhere. So here, the top lines are going to be straighter. The bottom lines are going to be a little bit curved. So we're going to start with the top lines. Also, the lines that are closer to the middle. Do you see this is the middle, right, of your eye? They're going to be um, more straight as well. And as they go on the sides, they're going to be on an angle. And the angle is going to change. On the right side, is going to be towards that side curved. On the left side, is going to be towards this side. So keep that in mind. Let me show you. I'm going to start... 
right here. And what I'm going to do, first I'm going to add just a little line right here. From the middle, and I'll fade it to the both sides with my small brush. Just to separate it a little bit more. No line. So I'm going to start with um, line here, line here, line here, line here, and so on. And as you go further towards the side, the angle is going to change as well gradually. Did you see I'm flicking from black, from black, from black? Where's the middle? And then I'm going to do the same thing all the other side, but on a different angle, of course. Now the top, the line above, is just going to be one line, but I'm going to make it curved. So if here, it was like this, right? So there, it's like a um, section that goes like this, so all the lines have to follow the same shape. The section on top is going to be curved like my hand, right? So all the, hand, all the lines are going to be slightly curved as well. So let me show you. The ones that are here in the middle are going to be more straighter, and then as we go onto the side, they're going to start changing the angle and they're going to get curvier, curvier, and curvier as we go. More curved and more curved. And you will see they might not blend perfectly right now or look like they are standing out too much. That's only because this black is still wet and the black on the background is already dry. Once all the black dries, it's going to look like they match, like they come from the same place. You'll see. You just have to wait until it dries. And then turn it on to the other side here. That's our two top lines. And then the last one is going to only have one flick from here out. And after that, I'm going to move on to the bottom here. Now, the bottom ones are going to be a little bit different shape. So this one, let me show you, it's going to be curved like this. You see it? Like a wiggly airline. Well, you could totally do your own design here.
And as you guys noticed, I'm making this one a little thicker as well. And this bottom, I'm going to do the same as top. Do you remember how we just did curved flick? So the bottom ones, I'm going to do curved flick, but I'm going to try to match it to the same one. So do you see it like extension of this one? Awesome. So I have all my black done. The only thing that's left for me is white highlights all over the place. But I'll give you guys a couple more minutes. I know there's a lot to do in black. So I'll give you some time. And when you're ready, let me know. And then we'll move. But until then, keep working on it. And guys, by the way, if there's a section of this video you would like to rewatch even right now, um, what you could do, Facebook allows you to rewind it back, the video, even while we're still live, even before it's recorded and posted. As we go, you can just scroll back into the video if you would like to have a little bit more time on certain section or if you'd like to rewatch certain section. And then whenever the video is done recording fully, it's going to be posted and then you're going to have ability to pause it as well, which is I know a lot of people love that option and it is a good option to have. Um, yeah, so you will have that option as soon as video is done recording and posted on Facebook, which is going to be as soon as we're done here. But, of course, the benefit of having a live event and uh, participating while we're live is that you can ask questions. And I'm here to answer all, answer all your questions, guys. So I'll give you a couple minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to check the comments and see if anyone has questions. Tara, just to recommend proper brushes and paint, well, I would definitely recommend the paint that we use. It's a great paint. I love it. We use a couple different brands. This is one of them, Artist Loft. We only use white and black from this brand, though. And their black could be ify, but their white is great. So we definitely recommend. Their other colors are really good, too, actually. Um, but we mostly use white from that brand. Another brand that we use... Their black is not bad, too. It's just I prefer different brand for black. The other brand that we use is Art Noise. Um, all we use primary colors from there. This is primary yellow. It actually called that way primary yellow. And another brand that we use is called Start. Oh, here it is. Start. I prefer this brand, and it's really funny why I prefer this brand. I prefer this brand because their lid is pretty thick. So in comparison to this brand. You see, it's a good paint, but the lid is very thin. The opening is here is thin, so what it does, it clogs all the time with paint because I don't close my paints properly because I paint so much that I just, yeah, it doesn't make sense. They just stay open all the time. And this one, it's easier to close it, like you don't have to put any effort. And this hole doesn't clog, so that's why I recommend this. The other brand is good too, though. As far as brushes, uh, I have some dollar store brushes, I have some really expensive brushes, I have some brushes I ordered from Amazon just to try, and there are a lot of decent brushes around. I don't have a brand that I could recommend you, because I don't have a personal brand, uh, I don't have a preference on the brand of brushes. I'll use anything as long as it looks good. Um, yeah, good. The only thing I would say look out for brushes is I personally prefer synthetic brushes for acrylic. So 
I don't like natural brushes for acrylic, but I prefer synthetic. Also, for the small brushes, you really need to have a nice pointy tip. That's something to look out for. But that's pretty much it. And for my square brushes, I like them thin. So I don't like them puffy, fluffy. Thick brushes, I like them thin because I like to use the top edge and I want my top edge to give me a really fine line. So, But all of this is just a personal preference. It's nothing against other brushes. Where do I get stirred brand? We get them at Curry's. But depending on where you live, you might not have curries around you. So I would say just Google and see what around you carries that brand. And thanks, guys. All right. Keep going and let me know once you have this and I will show you white. Almost there. Or I can hold it closer, no problem. Okay, guys, we're moving on to the fun things. Well, not that all of this wasn't fun, but we're moving on to more of the fun things. And we're going to grab some white. So you're going to start by grabbing not too much white on your brush. So just a little bit. And I personally water it down a little too for this particular step. So it's not like crazy, crazy bright white. It's a little softer. And we're going to start adding highlight around those sections. So right here on top, I'm going to add a little white brush strokes. Right here. You see just a little. And then I'm going to add a highlight here. Again, mostly on this middle section, but a little bit closer to the sides as well. But you do still want to visually fade it as you go further. So here's a closer look. Do you see? My lines are thicker, more visible, it's like a fuller line. And then as I go lower, it gets smaller, more like a flick, until it disappears. And the same thing on the other side. After that, we're going to go on to this top section. And that's where you're going to have a bit more highlight, because this one needs to be pretty light
and now the bottom. So this in between uh, right here, highlight. And again, try to fade it as you go towards the sides, but if it doesn't happen, that's fine in this case. And pretty much the same thing with the next one too. And after this, I'm going to move on to the actual inside of the eye. So do you remember those things I told you I made it a little too thick here? So now I'm going to add the white highlights that will cover that up. So I added, you see, a line right here and a line right here, and it slimmed this black section. Now, another thing I'm going to show you, but it's optional, guys. Remember, you don't have to do it if you don't want to, but you can, is you can add a little bit of lines right here. Do you see how I'm adding them? You see? It adds a bit of design on the eye as well, but very optional. You might not like them because they're a bit harsher. So if you don't mind the lines and a bit more design, definitely add them just very, very lightly. If you're happy with your eye as is, do not add them. Because you're not going to be able to get rid of them if you don't like them. I like it. I like that there is a bit of linearness and a bit more design. Now another thing I'm going to do, I'm going to grab medium brush and just a little bit of white again, very little, just a dry brushing technique. And I'm going to add a line right here. So this line is basically, so the shadow from the lid is falling and that's going to be indicating where the shadow from the lid is over and where the light hits. But you have to dry brush it on. It's very important. So I'm going to use the top edge of my brush to actually start and just mark where that line is going to go. You see, it's not a full line, it's just like half line. And then I'm going to dry brush it towards the bottom a little bit. You see, very transparent. That's the most important thing here is transparency. This has to be transparent.
And then I'm going back to my white and a small brush. And I'm gonna add a little highlight. So I'm gonna add a highlight in this corner. And highlight along this flick as well. I'll add a little highlight between this line and the eye. Do you remember this black section? So right in there, just a couple little square strokes. And the same on the bottom, so on this black section that's between this line and the actual eye, just a couple little brush strokes. Now I'll add a highlight, a brighter highlight right here on the same line, this thicker flick. small ones right here. And a couple dots. And that's pretty much it. If you guys want to add a highlight anywhere else, go for it. Technically, you can add a limited amount of highlights here, just the glare, right? But yeah, I am done after this. The only thing that's left for me personally here, well, except maybe erasing. I feel like that's too much. Okay, yeah, let's erase it. Yeah, now I feel like the only thing that's left for me is to sign it. So I'm going to grab my brush and I'm going to go on a black and I'll sign it on a black. That's a good spot to sign it. Done, done, and done. Now guys, feel free to ask any questions that you may have while I am still here. I'm definitely going to give you a bit more time. Now, as I mentioned it, as soon as the recording is done, it's um, you're going to be able to pause it. So it's going to stay on our Facebook for a couple of weeks, I would say about a month, probably about four weeks. And then we will move it to YouTube, where it's going to stay pretty much forever. So you will have a chance to finish it. Or if you want to make it again with another color for the eye, go for it. Yeah, and of course, both of those options are going to give you ability to pause this video and rewind it and then watch it. And if you guys uh, want to share how it turned out, we would love to see them. Feel free to take a photo and post it right here in comments right now it's probably not going to allow you to post a photo but as soon as we're finished and the video is posted on facebook it will give you ability to post uh your pictures and comments alternatively you can post pictures in comments on event page so everyone else who participated can see how it turned out and that way you can see everyone's paintings as well which is just so much fun because they always look so different and really beautiful so that's like a little treat for everyone if you want to do that, no pressure if you don't. That's totally fine. Yeah, now guys, if this was your first time painting with us, we're so glad you're here. Um, if you don't know anything about us, we do events. We do this free Facebook Live events. We're going to be moving on to free YouTube events in October. Actually, we're going to do half um, of free events that we do on Facebook and half of them on YouTube. Just because Facebook has given us a lot of troubles lately. So we're trying to see if YouTube is going to be a better solution. So we'll do 50-50. And we have Zoom events pretty much every day. And they're not that expensive. They're $10. It's a virtual event. And you can um, 
you will get a recording with your ticket so you will be able to rewatch it as well for a month which is great yes so if you guys had fun uh, feel free to tell your friends all about us and join us again for more events and if you want to tip me I will never say no to that again this event is free you don't have to I love doing it regardless but if you do want to support us you can tip me through PayPal or e-transfer I'll never say no to that and my information is in description of this video so you can find it there you guys are very welcome I'm so glad you enjoyed this guys if anyone has questions ask me now before I go <laughs> While I'm here, ask away all the questions that you may have. Yay! So glad. All right, guys, if no one has any questions for me, I am going to disconnect from you and you can continue painting using a recording if you are not done or you can go and finish it tomorrow. That's totally fine too. And yes, don't forget to take photos and post them in comments so we all can see them. You're very welcome. All right, enjoy your night, everyone. Bye, guys.